Hi, welcome to yeah. Double Label Staining yeah. Intensity Analysis uh, in Pips Week. Yeah. I'm John Harkness, and I'm going to yeah. uh, show you a little bit about how to do this yeah. with a uh, WFA and Parvel Bumin combination. Uh, again, Pips Week has really been designed for analysis of perineuronal net intensity. Um, not to say it can't be used for other types of uh, cells or stains. Uh, but in this case, our parameters are really tailored to uh, WFA and parvalbumin. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and start. We're going to click uh, the double label intensity analysis and move forward. And so again here, just like with the single label analysis, we have the choice of running semi-automated, automated, or automated analysis, um, and then also a choice of uh, summing our Z stacks into images for analysis. Uh, much the way they are much the same as a single label. Um, Semi-automated is going to be a little bit more cautious. It's going to give us the chance to double check the cells that Pipsqueak is identifying. Uh, I think especially in the case of double label analysis, it's good to use semi-automated rather than automated. Uh, however, if you're finding that the program is working very well for you, then automatic might be the, the way to go. It is quite fast when you run it on automatic. Uh, Semi-automated just pauses a couple times for you to double check the stains. So let's go forward with that. And the first thing we're going to do is select our first image. So here it's important to remember the order of images that we input in our settings window. And so actually before we choose our image here, let's go ahead and look back at our settings. So in this case, on the third window of our settings, uh, we can see the three images that we are uh, pointing our double label analysis towards. Uh, in this case, the first image is going to have the uh, suffix 1, the second image is going to have a suffix 3, and our merged image is going to have a suffix 2. So make sure you enter these as appropriate for uh, your image series. We go back to oops. We go back to our analysis. Now we're going to open the image. Okay, so what we can do here is choose our image that we're going to analyze. Uh, for example, let's just choose this guy here. Uh, and so, what we want to be careful of is to make sure that the suffix of this image, which is one, uh, matches up with that that we put in our settings and saw a second ago. So. This is number one. That's going to be the first one we'll analyze, and I'm going to open it. All right, and so what you can see here is that the first image is a parvalbumin stain. And the reason I like to analyze the parvalbumin first is because uh, the stain is really just staining the cell body, so it produces ROIs that are very tight against the cell. Uh, whereas the stain that we are co-labeling these uh, cells for is very large. The WFA stain, we like to incorporate the dendrites or processes that come off of the cell body. And so the ROIs tend to be much larger than just the cell body. Therefore, uh, the first one can fit inside the second one, um, which tends to make the analysis go a little bit smoother, um, although I don't think it's entirely essential. So in this case, PARV is number one. Uh, and we're going to call this uh, subject one just for uh, this example here. So uh, I started it up and the first thing it does is uh, subtracts out the background just like we did in the single label analysis. And once it's done that, uh, it's going to go through and start to look for uh, cells that match the description of what we've told it to look for. So uh, in this case, uh, since we're really just looking for the cell body, uh, I've kept my, uh, my, det my detection threshold pretty low and I've also kept my cell size pretty small. So if you were looking at CFOS or something like that, uh, these parameters might also work for you there. Uh, and so you can see it's detected a number of cells. I think there are probably a couple more here that it didn't pick up on. So why don't we try dropping this down just a touch. We'll drop it down to 0 0.9 and see if that picks up more cells. We'll also click, yes, I want to rerun with the new settings. And it's going to try one more time. Um, okay, maybe it got a couple more things there, but not a huge change. So rather than doing that forever, let's just do this by hand. So we'll choose our second uh, choice here. No, I'd like to add delete by hand. 
And just like in our single label analysis, we want to leave this dialog window open while we, uh, we edit our uh, ROIs here on the image. And so I've got my image selected. I'm going to toggle on and off the ROI so I can see what's been detected and what hasn't. Um, in this case, you can see a lot of cells here that uh, are being picked up, but a couple that aren't. And so what I'm going to do first is maybe add a couple more that I think are cells that should be included. And to do that, I'm going to select just a random ROI, in this case, number one. And I'm going to take it and place it over cells that I think should be included. And when I place it over a cell, I can do one of two things. I can either click Add uh, over here in the ROI Manager, or I can press the T button on the keyboard. So I'm going to press T, and what that does is, uh, oops, is adds a new ROI there. Um, change the side, okay. And so that's now number 19. So I'm going to continue to do that for. Uh, a couple other cells that I think should be included here in this analysis. Um, and you know, that's this might or might not be one, but I think that's actually probably an artifact, so I'm gonna ignore it and call that good. Uh, however, there are a couple of these cells that are uh, maybe not or should not be included, and so again, we can see that easily by toggling um, all the ROIs on and off. And when I do that, actually I'm seeing that everything that's labeled and probably should be labeled. However, uh, I'm going to add uh, maybe just a couple more here that I think work. Uh, in the case of this number 13, that one's a little big, so I'm gonna shrink that ROI down and call it good. So we'll press okay. And what that's gonna do is uh, start the process again so that we move on to uh, the second uh, stain for analysis. It's also going to collect the uh, intensity of the first stain here. And when it does that, it's going to print those values into our log window. And so we'll have those uh, later on for analysis. And it's moved on to our second stain, to WFA. So it's moving through. It is looking for WFA cells. And this is what I came up with. Uh, again, I think there are probably a couple more WFA cells. So let's try dropping. Uh, this threshold down just a bit, drop it down to 1.05 and tell it to rerun with those settings. And when it does, uh, it looks like it picked up a couple more, so that's great. Uh, but then let's go ahead and finalize things by hand. And when we do that, uh, in this case, uh, here's one issue that you really want to keep an eye out for and that's when two cells might be incorporated into one cell. And this is really probably the biggest reason that you don't want to run uh, pipsqueak on automatic mode is because sometimes you'll end up with multiple cells put together. So I'm going to delete that ROI and I'm going to draw two new ones that uh, sort of encompass these two cells, or what I think are two cells separately. Um, and this guy up here and then let's toggle on and off and delete any other cells so I think that there is probably not a cell here I think that that's just an artifact so I'm going to delete that I think that number nine probably doesn't fit what uh, in our lab we call a WFA cell number 10 certainly doesn't and I think that number eight also doesn't um, so for, oh, and let's also delete number nine. We'll call that good. Maybe this could use a little bit more work, but for our example, I think this is good enough. And so now that we're finished here, we're going to press OK. And what's going to happen now is it's again going to measure this uh, single label for WFA. But after it does that, it's going to go through and it's going to try to find the uh, WFA cells that overlap with the PARV cells. And it's going to do it really quickly, but hopefully we'll get to see that. Um, so I think it's running in the background here. So what you can see is that it's gone through and it, uh, it found all the circle PARV ROIs that fit inside of uh, square WFA ROIs. 
and now it's giving us a chance to double check it. And here, what I'm really looking for are instances where I think the PARV cell is not the same as the WFA cell. So for example, if we, uh, if we double check this here, um, I'm going to, to change one. Let's say this, uh, this PARV cell just happens to be over there and uh, the WFA cell, now what we see when the two are merged together is that that PARV cell, while still inside of the WFA ROI, uh, is probably not the same cell. And so this is one that I would want to delete out of our double label analysis. Um, of course, that's not really the case. The program actually did a good job of detecting the same cell there, so I'm just gonna put it back and we can continue on with our analysis. All right, so there we are. This is our final uh, double label set, and I'm gonna accept double labeling as is, and we can move on. And so what Pipsqueak has done is, again, measured the uh, intensity of those, of those images, and it's printed it all out here into the log window. So uh, if you were going to analyze more images, you could go ahead and say open next, and it's just gonna start back at the beginning, or if you wanted to do something else, you could go to uh, the main menu. For our case, let's go ahead and just take all these data and import them into Excel so we can start looking at how to uh, post-process the data. So again, I'm going to uh, select all here and then copy. And I'm going to open my Excel window. Okay, so I'm going to paste the data into Excel here. And just like in our single label analysis, what you can see is it's pasted everything into a single column. Uh, and so we want, what we want to do is expand these columns out into uh, multiple columns and then delete some of the extraneous information that's in here uh, from the program. Some of that information is actually really useful if you're just doing a quick analysis. For example, it's telling you the number of cells that were singly stained or were stained with uh, parvalbumin uh, and the intensity of those uh, cells. It's also telling you uh, the number of like co-labeled uh, parvalbumin cells here would be 11 out of the 22 that we saw up here. So some of that information is nice, but uh, when we're preparing the data for statistical analysis, it can really get in the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to select everything and we're going to go to our data tab and expand the text into columns. Oops, I'm sorry. So we're just going to click column A and we're going to expand to columns. And just like in the single label analysis, we're going to unselect tab and we're going to select space because that's how the data are formatted and finish. And so what that's going to do is uh, turn that table of information into a usable format. Now we want to get rid of all that extraneous information. And so to do that, I'm going to select everything and then sort. And I'm just going to sort by uh, our subject number, even though we just have one subject here. And Importantly, well, uh, yeah, for this case, we, get, we can just sort by, uh, by our first column there. And so when we do that, uh, what you can see is that it separated all of our data into the top and everything else below. Before I delete everything else, there is one thing I want to take. I want to keep our table headings. And so this is one column or one row here that has all that done. I'm going to cut this row and uh, paste it up here at top. And when we do that, you can now see all those table headings and I'm gonna select everything else below and uh, get rid of it because we don't need that. Now that I've done that, what I wanna do is sort all of my, uh, all of my data back into a uh, usable format and so now I want to select everything and uh, you can say that we have column headers. And so I probably want to sort by subject number because I might have more than one subject in a real data set. And I also want to store, sort by stain type. And the stain type is very important. In fact, you probably actually want to put stain type above subject. And the reason for that is if you are looking at intensity values, uh, oops, you're more than likely going to want to uh, compare all of your stains together. So I want to compare all the parvalbumin or all the double labeled parvalbumin stains 
uh, to the others of that type and all the uh, double labeled WFAs to others of that type uh, between subjects. So now that I've done that, um, I can again look at my mean minus background column because these are the data that have been uh, corrected for the background uh, level of staining. And these are the data that I would go on to use uh, in further uh, statistical analysis. So with that, you are done with your first double label analysis and you can move on to statistics.